Dave Palumbo here with Muscle Serpents Daily and I just got done feeding. So I'm gonna do a quick video for you guys and today's topic is gonna be workhorse females. That's right, those are female snakes that don't look maybe like much, or don't look spectacular, but that have the genetic potential to carry um, a legacy of great snakes into the future. They're snakes that don't look glamorous, but they produce amazing stuff. And these are the snakes that you have to hold back. These are the snakes that you should have a lot of in your collection because they eat well, they breed well, they're healthy snakes, they have what we call hybrid vigor because maybe they're not 16,000 visual genes, maybe they're hets and they carry recessive traits, but or even the possibility of recessive traits that you don't even know and you kind of just held them back because they're possible for a bunch of different genes. These are animals that can be invaluable in your collection. And I'm gonna show you a couple that I have in my collection that I've been growing up and that will hopefully breed this year. Some of them are two or three years old. Some of them weren't great eaters, but I held back because maybe I was gonna sell them and they didn't sell. And then I wound up taking them off the list because I said, you know what? This is a snake I need in my collection. So let's go into the snake room and take a look. I'm starting off today's video with this very special carpet python that's Certainly an albino, and he's a, she's a 66% head. He's anthic. This is a 2017. Now, what makes this girl special? Well, if you guys have watched my videos over the years, this was the very first carpet python I ever produced. It was a one egg, well, one egg out of the entire clutch survived. It was my double head snow to double head snow. And my girl was a little, I guess, she really wasn't young, but it was her first clutch, and just nothing went right. And this, this was the only one that survived and this snake would not eat. And because it was my first and I didn't want to, I didn't want to throw in the hat, so to speak, I assist fed, force fed, whatever you want to say, I kind of shoved the pinky down her throat for a very, very long, I, I didn't, matter of fact, I didn't even think this snake would ever eat. I, I didn't think it would ever thrive. I thought it would die, but I said, I'm going to try to keep this, this, this snake alive. The snake has never struck at anyone. This is like my, what I call my training snake people come over and they want to uh, you know hold the snake for the first time she's matter of fact I didn't even know she I didn't think she had a tongue originally because I never saw her tongue and then all of a sudden her tongue developed, like started flicking out of her mouth after maybe almost like eight months or something like that so oh well she does have a little tongue there then I thought maybe there was something wrong with her and so I, I just just kept her alive basically I just every week I would slide a pinky down her throat and anyone who says pinkies have no nutritional <laughs> value well the snake stayed alive, she shed, and she grew very, very slowly. Flash forward, we're at year, at three and a half years old, the snake is now. Just the other, every once in a while, what I usually do is, when I'm feeding is I'll throw a, you know, a fuzzy or something like that in there with her, and I'll just close the container. And then usually I go back, the, you know, the next day if she didn't eat it, which she never does, and I'll, and I'll assist feed, force feed her, whatever, whatever you want to do, just kind of slide it down her throat. And, I came in the other day and I didn't see the, the pinky so or the, the fuzzy. I'm like, I, hmm, I wonder if I took this out by accident and fed it to someone else. Because sometimes you need to do that. I just, oh, you know what, I'm going to feed this other ball python that needs it. You know, she can go a week without eating. And so the following week I did the same thing. And then I realized, I think she's eating. So I moved her to this bigger vision tub, which is a little big for her, but it's all right. She was in a hatchling rack for the first three years of her life. So now I'm going to give her some some room to explore and move around now. And I've been throwing in, I actually gave her a, uh, like a, almost like a, a crawler rat. So maybe even like an extra small rat, I would call it today. And she ate it. And you know what? I'm, I'm so mad that I didn't get it on camera because, but I'm so, I don't want to like spook her. So I just threw it in there, closed the thing. I said, I wonder if she needs this. Because this is the first real larger prey item that she's that she ever had an opportunity to try to eat. I mean, I've tried other ones. She never ever bothers to, you know, go near them. And I'm always worried they're gonna bite her or something like that because she's very, she's not an aggressive snake. And sure enough today, her first rat she ate and just goes to show you sometimes if you give enough TLC and a little love to an animal and you stick with them and don't give up on them, they sometimes pull out of it. And, uh, you know, I think she's gonna make it. I think she's gonna grow up. I think she's gonna maybe at some point breed in the future. I think she's gonna, she's gonna do well. I, I don't know what developmentally she was behind or maybe because of the egg, was, you know, it was like a, like I said, it was a weak litter, but she's always been a solid snake. She didn't have any defects. I always checked her, no kinks. Now, 
she looked great and that's why I kind of kept her alive because she was she was so nice and she was you know pretty perfect looking and there really was nothing wrong with her so I'm like you know I'm, I can't see myself put her in the freezer or you know or whatever so I just kept her and I stuck with her and she's you know she only got her adult colors I don't even know if she's fully adult colored yet only recently she was looking like a like a baby for for like years like a couple, like two and a half years because she wasn't really eating a lot and i guess nutritionally she wasn't really you know she was just eating enough to survive type of thing but there she is she made it now i don't want you know hopefully she'll continue to eat and grow and, and thrive and i'll keep you updated on her so there we go a success story now, really, today's theme of all the uh, of all the, the snakes I'm going to show you are, are, you know, workhorse females. I call them. They're the females that they don't look don't look glamorous. They're the females that you you think, well, maybe I should sell them, but they're the females that get the job done usually. And here's a female I produced back in '17. I was going to sell her. I had her for sale, and then I said, you know what? I'm going to keep her. This is an orange dream, and she 100% head pie. I slow grew her because I thought I was going to feed her. I thought I was, I thought I was going to sell her, excuse me. And she just you know, kept consistently growing. And, you know, she hit her little snag where she didn't want to eat for a while, you know, like most ball pythons do. And then she started eating again. And I actually bred her last year. Um, she was a little too small, I think. She didn't go. This year, though, I think she's going to definitely go. And, you know, think about it. I mean, She's not a glamorous, but Entry Orange Dream had pied. I mean, you breed her to a banana orange dream or banana super orange dream. I mean, we could produce some super orange dream, super Entry pines, you know, with this girl, so, you know, or even throw a banana in there, fire in there. I have, because I have some, if you have a good powerhouse male, you need solid females. And orange dream and Entry is always something good to have in your females. And, you know, even though she's not a visual pied, you know, you throw a, a visual male pie to her, you're, you're going to produce 50% of that litter is going to be amazing. So, once again, not glamorous looking, but powerhouse, you know, genetics in there that are going to really help bring your collections to the next level. So these are the snakes that, you, that really, you know, make can make or break your collection. You know, I always I asked Pete Call years ago when I went to his facility, I said, Pete, why do you have so many hats and double hats? I said, why don't you, I mean, you have visuals. Why don't you move up? He goes, the heads and double heads, and I've said this before in videos, I've told the story, are the most reliable eaters and breeders, he said. And you know what? You can never put a price or, or you know, they're, they're invaluable in your collection. He said, I'm telling you, never get rid of them. You know, they're, they're tried and true. They'll, they'll live forever, too. And he's right. This, they're, they're rock-solid snakes, you know, and so... I took that advice to heart, and when I started building my collection, I always remembered that. Here's another interesting, you know, snake that I almost sold, and then I wound up keeping. This is uh, an Enchi yellow belly or asphalt. You know, I think it's asphalt. You know, a lot of people say you can't tell asphalt from yellow belly. I find that the yellow belly has way more blushing on the lower border, whereas asphalt is a lot less. Um, the dad was a Mardi Gras uh, or freeway, so you, it had to be... She has to be either yellow belly or asphalt. So that's Anchi, then yellow belly asphalt, 100% head albino. So, you know, as you saw probably last year, I made a really nice albino freeway. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous, uh, one of the nicest albinos out there, I think. And so this, this female that I held back, and once again, she's another 2017, and she'll probably go this year, I hope. Not the greatest eater, but she eats, and she's, you know, at a good age sometimes is more important with ball pythons, so she's at, at that three and a half year mark. She's going to definitely more than likely go, and I can produce, you know, even if she does, if I, it, let's say she's a yellow belly, and I breed, uh, like, one of my crazy Mardi Gras, you know, freeway combinations to this girl. We're going to produce either super asphalt, you know, if she's, I mean, we're going to produce either ivory stuff, or we're going to produce... Um, freeways. If she happens to be asphalt like I think she is, we're going to produce super asphalts, which are really valuable, and we're going to produce more um, freeways. So, and depending on if I use my albino, my visual albino uh, freeway, we're going to produce a lot of albino freeways from this, or, or albino super asphalts, which I don't even know if anyone's ever produced. I mean, probably someone has, but so this is once again doesn't look like a lot, but this is a powerhouse you know, 
workhorse female that is going to produce some amazing babies potentially. Now this girl that I got from Brad Boa um, didn't go for me last year. She was a little in the small size. She's still in the small size. I, I think that just age-wise, you know, I think if she starts nailing a few rats here and there, I think we're going to be fine and I think she might go. This is a, um, uh, a well, we, they call them lemon pastel, but this is really a, uh, or a spinner blast. This is a pinstripe pastel, which I love that combination. And she's got disco in her, which is kind of similar to fire. You know, it kind of yellows, creates that yellowing. And she's 100% head clown. So while she doesn't look like that exciting, we could produce a lot of cool stuff with this with the right male. I mean, if I have my fire, orange, dream, spider, clown male that I'm going to be breeding to this, this little girl. And we could produce vanilla or disco inferno clowns think about it with this or pastel disco inferno clowns and and then if, we, if you throw a pinstripe in there we can even add the pinstripe on top of that so we can produce some really insane clowns with a girl that just doesn't look that spectacular just by you know what, what she's got here but once again packing a lot of genetic punch and potential so you have to figure out and, and decide hey what am I going to breed to this girl and that's going to really dictate you know whether you're going to get magic or you're going to get you know coal so to speak <laughs> Really, you can't go wrong with any, any clown you breed to this girl because she's got a lot of interesting potential. And as you guys saw probably in some of my other stuff we did earlier this year, the pinstripe clown stuff is just amazing. You know, it's really very cool looking because the, the clown reduces that pinstripe patterning and really just makes it kind of like dashes, you know, just sporadically throughout the snake. And it really brightens up that like orangish, you know, color that's in the, um, the pinstripe because the clown and pinstripe kind of have similar colors. And when we know clown reduces pattern and color. So once again, a lot of potential here. All right, now here's a really beautiful looking snake, but you know, it looks like a white snake and it you really doesn't look like anything special. This is actually a lesser pied. When you combine the lesser gene and pied, you get a white snake, usually with smaller looking black eyes. And it's a, I mean, it's, it's about just about the whitest snake you, you'll see in the ball python world. I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's like a pure pied. It's just all the white in the pied, and that's all you're really seeing. Now, the interesting thing about her, if she just would stay still, is that she's also potentially banana, and she, orange dream, hurricane, and yellow belly. So here you got this white snake that doesn't look like much, and the potential that's hidden in this snake if she would only start eating regularly. She's, she's a fickle eater. Um, who knows what it, it's like. It's, this is a, what we call the scratch off lottery ticket because I'm gonna breed something pied obviously to this girl, a male pied. And we're, we, we, I have no idea what we're gonna produce. We could produce some crazy insane stuff or we could produce, you know, just pieds, you know, because she could just be, you know, she might just, just be lesser pie. She might not have any of those other genes in her, but the chances are there's going to be a few of those other genes in her because, you know, that's what the parents were. So imagine, you know, hurricane, um, orange dream, maybe there's a banana in here. Usually banana, you could, usually banana would be, you know, if she had like a, like a ruby a shy and she's got a kind of a black and shy. It's actually almost bluish looking. I, I don't know. I mean, that could be purplish. I don't know. Some people say the banana is kind of purplish eye, but um, possibility. You know, I, I you know the, the, the reason I don't think she's banana is because usually it's the males that, because my male that produced her was a male maker, but sometimes you do get females. I've gotten females from my male maker. But just like totally a girl in a cloak of invisibility. <laughs> And she could be a huge, huge producer if she actually breeds this season or maybe next season. Um, you never know what you're going to get. And we'll finish with one more, you know, workhorse female, as we call them. This is a beautiful super fire female that I almost sold. I had a bunch of, I produced a lot of super fires in this litter, actually. I had about two or three females and about four males. The great thing about this, and once again, this looks like a black-eyed leucistic, which is a cool, cool snake in and of itself. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. I mean, who doesn't want that snake? Everyone wants a white snake in their collection. 
However, she's also possible Orange Dream, possible Spider, and she's 100% head clown. So, you can't tell that by looking at her, but this snake obviously can produce some really, really cool stuff because any, any clown you breed to her, okay, you're gonna produce 50% fire clowns, which are awesome off the charts. I love the fire and clown gene together. That's, that's phenomenal. Um, if she has orange dream in her, you, you're gonna produce, you can produce orange dream fire clowns, which are even more awesome. And that's just if you just used a regular male clown. You know, let's say we went with an orange dream, uh, let's say, or let's, let's say you went with a GHI Mojave pastel clown to this female and got the fire in there. And, and we hit on the, um, the orange dream. I mean, we, we could produce some really sick stuff. So this female has a lot of potential. So you gotta, sometimes you gotta hold back, you know, more than you're comfortable holding back. I, I, I hold, I think I've been holding back too much lately, but you know what? I always regret, I have you know, sellers regret a lot of times about selling stuff that I shouldn't have sold. And so this female, I, I, I'm very glad I kept back because she's got great, she's about, she's about the whitest super fire that I've ever produced. That's why I really believe she's got the orange stream in her. And I think she might have spider, but I don't see any, I don't see any spider like, you know, movements from her. So I think that she's an orange dream super fire head clown. That, that's what I'm thinking. So anyway, hopefully you guys got uh, an idea of what I was trying to come across with that sometimes the most indistinct females can be your greatest assets in your collection. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. Um, here at Muscle Serpents Daily. And I hope you guys got a, a little lesson in, you know, if you're going to have a breeding collection, not everything's going to be super spectacular, but you have to hold back stuff that you know has future potential. That's right. In other words, I'm a big believer in having spectacular males and then have females that have, you know, good recessive traits that are heads, that are stuff that, you know, if you breed a good male to, you're going to produce great stuff. Because if you just breed a great male to, like, say, a, let's say you have a, a spectacular clown, and you breed it to just a regular head clown female, which is nothing wrong with that. I, I have plenty of those too. You can get clown stuff, but you're not going to get next level clown stuff. But if you have an orange dream entry head clown, for instance, and you breed it to a an orange dream, you know, fire clown, you're going to produce, you know, spectacular, super orange dream possible fire clowns. I mean, that that's amazing. So it enables you to take that male to the next level. And even though you might not have that same male and female, because obviously that it's a super expensive, if you're going to spend money on an investment animal male, you're not going to, more than likely, you're not going to buy the female that's going to be just as spectacular because, you know, you'll be bankrupted before you know it. So you got to have females that you're going to grow that, that, that can express those male genes, but that maybe takes them to another level as well. Now, you could produce that stuff in your collection as well. You know, I see Justin Gabilker and Ozzy and a lot of, you know, very good breeders out there that are mixing stuff. That are instead of going for the visuals, they're going clown to pied to create amazing, you know, double hats, uh, clown to desert ghost, stuff like that. And then, you know, they got to grow the stuff up. So, you know, it takes two, three years, but then you're producing amazing, amazing stuff. So never discount a very uh, important you know, genetic powerhouse female that doesn't look genetic powerhouse, but that has that punch that's just waiting to be unleashed once she's ready to breed. All right, guys, you know what to do. Hit that uh, subscribe button, turn on your notifications, hit the like button. We'll see you back tomorrow. And have a wonderful Thanksgiving.